Hi everyone. So in this video, we discussed two major problems with uh, with basically optimizing long-term dependencies uh, while training recurrent neural networks. So the first is uh, is basically given by the example here. So let's say I ignore the nonlinear activations, right? So let's say I'm, uh, even if there is a ReLU activations, I take only the group of hidden units where the ReLU uh, units are active. Right, so h of t is the uh, hidden unit activation values at the t time step. Right, this is equal to w transpose the linear transformation times h of t minus one. Right, and this is a network with hidden to hidden recurrence. Now, as we so h of t minus one is also equal to w uh, transpose h of t minus two, which is equal to w transpose h of t minus three, and so on. Right. So you will end up with raising W, the matrix W, the matrix given by the weight, the transformation from one hidden uh, state uh, in one time step to the next, raised to the value of the time step T, right? And this is in forward propagation, right? Uh, transpose times H of Z. Now let's say this W, I can decompose it. I can have an eigen decomposition of it. So I have Q, which is the uh, orthonormal matrix of eigenvectors and lambda, the uh, diagonal matrix of eigenvalues of W, of the weight parameters from one hidden unit at a time step to the next. Then H at time step T, if I multiply this W by itself, I have Q lambda Q transpose, right? So I have Q lambda Q transpose times Q lambda Q transpose, right? The Q transpose Q is the diagonal matrix. So you end up with Q lambda square Q transpose, right? When I raise W to the power T, you end up with having uh, uh, Q lambda to the T Q transpose. When I take the transpose of that, because there is a transpose here, right? Then you have Q transpose lambda to the T Q times h of z, right? So what will happen is that if w has a set of orthonormal eigenvectors, then w to the t will have the same set of orthonormal eigenvectors given by q. But the eigen, each of the eigenvalues will be raised to the power t, right? So what, what does that mean? That means that if there is an eigenvalue that's equal, to, let's say I am at the 100th time step, if there is one eigenvalue that has a value of uh, uh, that has a value of 0.9, another eigenvalue that has a value of 1.1, right? I raise them to the hundred. The 0.9 will become will become 0.1 to the hundred, which is a very small number. The 1.1 will become 1.1 to the hundred, which is a very large number, right? So what happens is that the long-term dependencies will be dominated by the large, the one or few largest uh, eigenvalues or the one or few directions of W that correspond to the largest and close to largest eigenvalues. Why is that hurtful? Because it greatly diminishes the expressive power of the network, right? So in the first place, W had many dimensions because I wanted to represent complex functions. So if W has, let's say, uh, uh, 100 parameters, then I want the 100 parameters to be actively learning, right? What does it mean that learning only happens in the dimension corresponding to the largest eigenvalue? That dimension is just one dimension. So it's as if I have only one active parameter. Right, But instead of one active parameter, I have a linear combination of the weight parameters that's only active, right? So I could replace all, the, like all that linear combination by just one parameter, right? So, so basically, this is what's happening, is that the long-term dependencies are, even if you have a large layer, from uh, representing the hidden to hidden recurrence, it ends up being that the longer the sequence is, the longer term dependencies are captured by only 
few active parameters you can think of, right? Or few active equivalent parameters that represent linear combinations of all these parameters. So it doesn't matter if you have 1000 parameters, at the end, if there is one dimension that dominates, it's as if you just have one parameter that's used to learn the longer term dependency, right? So that becomes a problem in forward, uh, in, uh, in forward propagation is that basically the longer term dependencies are dominated by only a few dimensions, right? So it's very hard to model complex long term dependencies that need a lot of dimensions in the W to represent them, right? Because of the raising to the power T. That's the first problem. And in this video, we'll just uh, explain problems, not solutions, because many of these problems are actually open uh, research problems. Now, the second problem is that basically uh, a, a little bit of a paradox that makes optimizing recurrent neural networks that uh, very difficult, especially if these recurrent neural network, uh, uh, networks are required to capture very long term dependencies, is that Let's think about the forward propagation, right? I'm raising W to the power T. Let's say I want to capture a, a dependency across 1000 time steps. So I'm raising W to the power 1000, right? Let's say my W that I'm learning is a little noisy, like the learning is imperfect. So there is uh, some noise in the W. I don't have the ideal value yet. That noise will also be raised to the power 1000, right? So what I, so basically it becomes necessary that the outcome or the cost function is not very sensitive to changes in W, meaning that I have to be in some kind of a flat region where the gradient of the cost with respect to W is very small, right? So in order to learn long-term dependencies, I have to be insensitive to perturbations, perturbations that will be raised to a large power. So that means that I want a gradient, I want to be in an area of a vanishing gradient, right? And that is problematic because if I am in an area of a vanishing gradient, it's very hard to learn, especially with a recurrent neural network because the gradient already suffers in the back propagation, right, from the computation of W raised to a large power, right? So if the gradient itself is vanishing, right, then, then actually it's, uh, you, cannot, you cannot know which direction to go while training. So uh, training or learning during training stops, right? So the gradient of a long-term interaction has exponentially smaller weight than that of a short-term interaction. So the network will tend to have the output at time step 1000 only affected by, uh, by the values of the input around time step 1000. So the ones maybe from 990 to 1010, let's say as an example. But compare the effect of these inputs with the inputs that happened at time 10 with respect to time step 1000. Right? There is a large difference because when I compute the back propagation with respect to time step 10, there is a difference of 990. So the weight during com the computation of the gradient will be raised by a power of 990. And if the gradient is vanishing, right, in order to learn, that means that W raised to that large power will be a very small number. Right? So that means that basically the effect of these long-term interactions would be negligible. So then it can take a very long time while training to capture the important long-term dependencies. Right? So to recap, we discussed two problems. One is the domination of the, uh, the directions of W or the dimensions of W corresponding to the largest uh, or the close to largest eigenvalues. And the second is this dilemma where you have to have vanishing gradients because you should not be sensitive to small perturbations in the weights because they will get exponentiated by a large power. And at the same time, even in back propagation, we exponentiate by a large power. So uh, vanishing gradient will make capturing long term interactions very, very slow. Right. So it will take a long time. Now, I want you. This is an open thought exercise. 
Think about what adding noise does, right? So when you add noise to the weight parameters, you are enforcing a regularization effect that basically makes you search for flat regions, right? Which can be desirable because it makes you insensitive to small perturbations in them. But this noise will also get exponentiated by a large power. So maybe you want to add noise that are different in each, that are that is independent in each time step. So that the exponentiation by a large power doesn't all happen in the same direction. And this randomness basically compensates for, uh, for itself, right? So I think that's an interesting problem. What adding noise to weights will do for recurrent neural networks and how it can be helpful uh, for optimizing and training them. Thank you.